Today I'm going to be going over 10 basic photography tips with you. Click the link in the description for the PDF version of all these tips. You can take this with you anywhere, on your computer, on your phone, when you're shooting, when you're out in the field. This is an awesome little tip sheet for you guys. It's going to be really helpful and make sure you remember all these things, go over them, and don't forget to practice. Shoot in RAW plus JPEG. When it comes to editing, I'm just editing the raw photos. But when it comes to going through all the photos, sorting them, organizing them, showing the clients, it helps so much to have raw plus JPEG. And the reason why is because the raw photo is huge. The JPEG is much smaller. So when you want to go through all the images, you can just scroll through them a lot quicker when you're looking through the JPEG image. So you find the image that you want, and then you edit the raw version of that image. Now I want to show you the proper way to hold the camera. So first let's start with landscape mode. Okay, so this is the way that I hold it, just like that. I've got my elbows tucked in, and they're pretty much pushed up against my torso. Now some people, they'll keep uh, an elbow out like this. I don't like that. Um, especially if you're shooting around other people, it just, get, it just gets in the way. So you want to keep your elbows tucked in like this. And you'll notice that having your wrist and your hand pointed up towards the sky keeps it much more stable. I see a lot of beginner shooters holding the lens like that. And it just kind of creates this wobbly effect. Um, you'll probably get a lot more blurry photos. Um, especially if you're doing video. But photo-wise, I always recommend to keep it like this, and then when you need to zoom in and zoom out, you can just use your thumb and middle finger like that. Pretty easy. Now for shooting in portrait mode, or vertically, like this, again, people will keep the elbow out like that, or keep the elbow in like this. If you're shooting around other people, red carpet paparazzi style, or just in a big crowd, um, I think it's just better practice to keep the elbow in. So my left arm is tucked in, pushed up against my torso, and then my right elbow right now you can see is dropped. Now if you wanted, you could keep it out like this. It's just a matter of preference, but I do find that it's more considerate to keep the elbow in like that. And again, we have our hand or our palm pointed towards the sky, and this is going to create max stability. We are rotating the zoom with our thumb and our middle finger, and if we're shooting in manual mode, we can do the same thing with the focus ring right here. I can just let go of that hand, and I'm still holding it, but this is going to keep it more stable. When I'm shooting kids, animals, insects, I like to get down to their level. This creates a feeling of intimacy. It creates a vision of their world. I like to be able to show people what this subject is seeing, and the, really the best way to do it is from doing it from their eye level. If you plan on doing a long shoot, or you're gonna be out and about for a while, just go ahead and pack that charger in your backpack. Super simple, super easy. I like something like this. It's a dual charger. It allows me to charge two batteries simultaneously. And as you can see, there is a high and a low mode. And essentially, it's just uh, what you think it is. It's going to be putting out smaller amounts of power or large amounts of power, depending on how quickly or how fast you want to charge these batteries. I find that the battery gets about an hour of runtime, and it takes about an hour and a half to charge each battery. So just keep in mind that while you're charging, you may want to have some extra batteries ready to use. And that brings me on to my next tip, charge extra batteries. The Sony battery, as I said, lasts approximately one hour on a full charge. And if I'm going to be on a shoot, I charge them the night before the shoot. So with six of them, I'll get about six hours of camera use. And typically my events, they're not really any longer than that anyways. So I find that this is ideal. And then as I'm shooting, I can be recording at the same time. So if I am doing a longer photo shoot or a wedding or something like that, and it's eight to 10 hours, 
then I could be charging them as I'm using them. And then I never run out of juice. But it's always good to keep extra batteries. These batteries are pretty cheap. They've definitely come down in price. I prefer the Sony battery, the proprietary one, but there are people that like using the third party, so nothing against that. Uh, just do whatever you feel like is best. Also, what's great about this charger is that you can change out the charging adapter. And if you had a different battery or if you ever upgraded to a full frame or a different A6000 series camera that holds the NPFZ100 batteries, then you could easily go to that and it's pretty seamless. These batteries last longer for sure. Uh, they also take longer to charge. But again, this is a nice investment to have and this thing can grow with you as you're growing as a shooter. Memory cards. I've got 32 gig, I've got a 64 gig, and a 128 gig. This 32 gigabyte right here will hold about 915 photos and do about an hour and 20 minutes of HD video. This is with the camera set to 24 megapixels shooting in RAW plus JPEG. My 64 gigabyte memory card will do about 1830 photos and do about two hours and 40 minutes of HD video. Let's see if you can get a better look at this. It's been used quite a bit, so a lot of the writing has been rubbed off. Now the 128 gigabyte SD card will do about 3,660 images and will do about five hours and 20 minutes of video. Now keep in mind, uh, the A6000 has a 30 minute time limit. So if you need to be recording more, then just be mindful of that. You may have to just uh, keep track and then go back and then continue recording if you're doing a long shoot. Another thing to keep in mind is that it's very easy to get comfortable with bigger SD cards. And now what I mean by that is that um, when you're just shooting a lot of different shoots, you just continue shooting, you're not thinking about it. And then a day comes where you actually have to think about it and you're sorting through tons of files. Now you're going through raw files and JPEG images and you've got thousands of these. So uh, one thing I've noticed is that smaller cards like the 32, the 64 actually hold me more accountable and I tend to dump the files more often to an external hard drive. So at the end of the day, I'm not going to be searching through tons of images. And yes, it's really nice for a while until you have to go through all those images. And again, this is personal preference. So, you know, just circling back, the smaller SD cards do hold you more accountable or hold me more accountable. And I tend to like those better for photos. Now, if you're doing videos, I think it's better to have a larger capacity SD card. That's just to play it a little bit more safe. Here's another quick tip. Turn on airplane mode. Did you know that your camera has airplane mode? Sure, our phones have it, but our cameras have it too. And this can actually save you a lot of battery time. So I'm using airplane mode whenever I'm not using the Wi-Fi off my camera. I tend to use Wi-Fi when I'm transferring photos from my camera to my phone or I'm using real-time photo software where I need to be able to communicate between the camera and the phone. But when I turn that off, I notice that I get extended battery time and that can definitely help during a shoot, especially if you don't need Wi-Fi. It's a great feature to have, so try that out. Use your phone's flashlight. If you're shooting in low light conditions and you're having a hard time focusing, the flashlight can be a really big help. Most of us carry a phone on us and they do have flashlights now. So make sure you're utilizing that in low light conditions. So did you know that you could use your camera strap for more than just holding your camera? Yes, the camera strap has more than one use. Check this out. If you want to get more stable images or video, I've got a little tip for you and that's using the camera strap around your neck. So if you take the camera and you extend it away from you holding two elbows in, and kind of pushing forward with the camera. You'll feel a little tension around your neck. You can see right there, it's pushing just ever so slightly. You don't wanna strangle yourself from the back of the neck, which I guess isn't really possible, but what you're doing is you're creating another access point and 
you'll feel how much smoother it is moving the camera around. Now this is gonna be really good for those longer exposure shots where you have the shutter speed much slower, um, typically at night, but just depends on uh, a lot of different things. So this has some great benefits. Um, I've always said that if you have the camera strap around your neck, you kind of look like a noob or an amateur, but it is a really great tip and can help a lot. So right there, you can just be kind of moving in like this. I love doing this for video. It really makes my movements a lot smoother, especially if you don't have a gimbal. But yeah, just give that a try. It works really well. Now my last tip, tip number 10 is practice. Practice, practice. I can't stress this enough. If you can practice 30 minutes to an hour a day, that would be amazing. You're going to see results that you just wouldn't have expected. And it's so important to just reinforce the things that you're learning, to try different stuff out, to fail, to learn, to grow. This is really how you get better. I know it's very elementary sounding, but it works. So if you can strive to learn something new every single day, and you'll reach your goals a lot quicker. That's all I've got for you guys today. Click the link in the description and you can see a PDF version of all the tips I just showed you. Thank you guys so much. Take care.